and it's a delight to have you on Atlantic Television Sports Centre with Praise Alunge. And I'm not alone, Emmanuel Chisorum joins in on the show. Good to have you, Emmanuel. Good to have you, Praise. Um, it's been, a, it's been a, a good weekend of football and I'm happy to be here. Well, if you are watching at this time, welcome to the show. And we'll go for a short break now. When we come back, we'll take our stories. Stay with us. And welcome back, still Atlantic Television, Sports Centre, with Praise Alonge and Emmanuel here. And straight to some of our stories, let's start with the Super Falcons of Nigeria. As it stands, Nigeria will take on Japan on Thursday in a friendly game. Emmanuel, are you looking forward to this game in yeah. a big way? Yeah, of course, definitely. I mean, any friendly, the Super Falcons, one thing I'm happy with what they've done so far is that they've had very good friendlies in preparation for the World Cup. They had one against the US and now Japan. Japan is a heavyweight when it comes to female football. Absolutely. So I think these friendlies are better preparation for the World Cup. It's a good one. I don't look forward to the results. The results might go in our favor. It could also go in favor of the Asian ladies. But um, it's a very good friendly with a decent opponent. Good one. A good one for Nigeria, he says. Uh, but we saw them against the United States. Yeah. They lost 4-1 in the first game. And the second game, 2-1. Two two one. One, yeah. So if we, you, we could say that there's been a, bit, a little bit of improvement um, in, in, in the way they played. You could say probably based off of the scoreline and the result, there was an improvement in the second game. Uh, being that the result was not reflective of what happened in the first one. I think the first was 4-0 or 4-1. And then the second is 2-1. So they scored and then they tried to limit the opponent from scoring more goals. So that's a good one. Hopefully going forward against um, Japan, they could get a draw or even win the game after. Well, we look forward to that. And just away from the Super Falcons of Nigeria, let's quickly um, talk about the Flamingos. That is the under-17 girls. Uh, they are still in Turkey currently. And it's a 10-day campaign they went for ahead of the women's under-17 uh, World Cup in India. You know, that would start October 11th, thereabout. Uh, for Nigeria, we're going to be playing against Germany, against um, Chile, Chile yeah. and then New Zealand. New Zealand yeah. uh, they played a, a friendly game, <coughs> Nigeria won, against, um, you know, a Galatasaray a women's a team. But this time around, it's going to be a different ball game entirely. Add the, add the World Cup. Absolutely. But when you look at the group Nigeria is in, these are nations that take female football seriously. Look at Germany. Most of those girls might be playing in the academies for the Bayern women teams and all of those things. And then you look at um, uh, New Zealand. It's a very decent. They have also a very decent uh, f um, yeah, female, female league female football, and all of, female league. football and all of that. And then you look at G Germany, the less said, the better. And Chile as well, a very good nation when it comes to football. So I think we are in a very tight group. But then Nigeria is also known for her prowess in age grade competitions. And, and Nigerian female football is also top notch there when, when you look at nations with very good female football inside. Mm. So I, but that being said, I do think that the technicality of the, of the football game has really improved. It's not just. It's not just a talenting anymore. Uh, in the past, we relied on our talents. We go to the World Cup, we showcase our talents, and then clubs come to take these girls. But now, it has moved beyond that. I do think that some of the technicalities and the new dimensions that football has evolved into mm -hmm. needs to also be inculcated into what we have, not just the raw talent. So I feel that's the area the German ladies might have an edge over us. The New Zealanders might have an edge of ours and, and the and Chilean Chileans. girls as well. So we might have the talent, that there's no question about that. But the problem has always been, do we have the technicalities to go all out and play this game? And talking about technicalities, to look at our previous editions, yeah. we just have a way of playing well in the group stages. And then when it gets to the knockout stages, yeah. we face allowed. Absolutely. And we've not won it before. Can nigeria winning this time the girls are already talking tough even the coach also uh Olo Kere, coach Olo Kere is optimistic that the girls can go all the way to make nigerian proud how far can they go well let's see if um coming out of the group stage has been the 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 uh the uh the level for for god knows how long now maybe making it to the semi-finals should be the target this time and then let's not let's not jump the gun that's the issue because at the stage, at the knockout stages of this tournament, that's where technicalities come in, that's where tactics and, 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 and how far the, uh, these other teams have been ahead of, that's where it comes to play. Mm. That's where talent will not give you so much, right? Mm. So let's just see. 
if we have worked on these areas of our game, the yeah. technical aspect of our game, going into those um, um, stages of the tournament will not be a problem. But if those issues have not been resolved, I think it's going to be a problem. Away from the camp of Nigeria now, let's go to the Confederation of African Football, CAF, where CAF has reopened bid for the 2025 African Cup of Nations, according to report. CAF formally trip Guinea the right to host the 2025 um, African Cup of Nations. And as it stands, the right withdrawal followed a meeting that was held at the weekend in Conakry between Guinea's interim president, uh, Colonel Mamadi Duaboya, and also CAF president, uh, Patrick Motsefe. And so as it stands, Nigeria might be looking forward to bidding. At a point when uh, Maju Melvin Pinnick, um, the former NFF president, was actually on set, uh, he spoke about Nigeria's possibility of bidding alongside a Bene Republic uh, for the hosting right of um, the African Cup of Nations in 2025 and it's looking like Guinea might not be hosting now should Nigeria jump into a bidding. I don't think that Nigeria is ready for that right now. Why? Why not? And, and, I mean, I, other countries I, I, are host I, I, are hosted in yeah, Africa. Yeah, but then when you look at the security situations in those countries, I don't think it's at, it's as volatile as what we have in Nigeria. So I think CAF considers all of these things as well. You do not want to risk life and also risk diplomatic relationship with countries by allowing. That. I think we let us settle what we have going on here and let us also invest heavily in football infrastructure in this country then we can see we have the moral justification to go be to host tournaments. But is it just don't you think we can we can I, I mean it's still gonna be like a co-host situation between Nigeria and Nigeria. By Republic. the way I consider it as an insult to co-host with being in Benin Republic with due respect to them we shouldn't be doing that. I honestly think so. And and and, and the reason I think we've co-hosted once with Ghana, right? That was yes, two thousand yeah exactly but then I don't think we should co-host with Benin Republic, come on Nigeria. No, we shouldn't. I, I think we've got what it takes to host when we are ready. I think everything, all we, what do you need to host? Stable, stable, security wise, it should be stable. Then you should also have a, a football infrastructure and all of that. And so, and also with this, with the way Nigeria is structured, you need to spread the tournament across the geopolitical zones so that the games will be held Everywhere. Almost everywhere, south east, south west, south south, north east, north, north, east, west. north west. So when you look at all of these regions, so is north there any region that you don't have a, a security blemish or something? There's none. So we need to fix that, and that has to be with a new government or anything or this current government. Once that is fixed, then we can then go all out to say, let us now host as a nation, not not con uh, not uh, how do we put it? Now? Not bidding to host alongside the Republic. I just don't see that. Oh. Okay, uh, we'll go for our first break and when we come back from this, we'll talk about some foreign stories. But uh, do join the conversation, go to our social media platform, add your voice and drop your comments uh, for engagement. You've listened to all we've talked about. Do you think Nigeria should be for the African Cup of Nations? A bill for 2025. By the way, in 2023, uh, it's going to be I Côte d'Ivoire to host the tournament, and it's looking like Guinea might not be hosting the 2025. Should Nigeria and Benin Republic come together to host the tournament? Do join us to talk more after this. Stay with us. Welcome back, it's still Atlantic Television, Sports Central, and I'm Praise Alunge. And on the show, Imano Chisaramoso uh, is here. And away from Nigerian stories, why you keep your thoughts in, let's go to what happened at the weekend, uh, particularly the Premier League, where uh, great results uh, came out for some clubs. Maybe not the best of moment, but not to worry. Before we talk about the results um, that uh, came out at the weekend in the Premier League, let's also look at just a game tonight quickly. Uh, we'll talk about it. Leicester City against uh, Nottingham Forest at the King Power Stadium in Leicester. Uh, it's going to be 8 o'clock uh, tonight. Hopefully, we'll see Nigerian players in action. Uh, with Freddie Ndidi should be in action tonight. Also, Kelechi Hinacho uh, for Leicester City. Not forgetting also, in the hat for Nottingham Forest is a Nigerian... Um, two players um talking about the uh, striker now yeah, taiwa Wuni, yeah. and then uh we'll also s hope that emmanuel uh, bonaventure uh, would also be in ac action for nottingham forest in tonight's game uh it's a battle of relegate um relegation fighting team yeah. so to say leicester bottom with just one point 
Nottingham Forest are 19th with four points. Yeah. Um, dicey game. How do you think the game will pan out? Honestly, I, I see a Leicester victory here. Um, Whoa. The, the, Leicester, they are condemned to win this game. They've had a run of bad results and and that is reflective of what the table is saying. And I, I, I do think that if, if Brendan Rodgers, in as much as I don't blame him for the misfortunes of Leicester, if he doesn't win this game, he might just get the sack. I think they are they are sport to win this game. They just have to win this game. They are condemned to win the game. And also, there's a little bit of derby to it because I think they are winning the same region mm. as well. So, all that being said, I do think that Leicester needs this game. They need to win. They need to, I mean, they've, they've seen the horror before the international break. They need to now break away from that start with a victory at least against Nottingham Forest. If they can't beat Nottingham Forest, then we can say that the, tra the trajectory they are on is going to lead them to somewhere not very comfortable. Uh, and both teams have not met themselves um, um, so much in the Premier League, really. They've only met uh, six times and we've seen two draws uh, between them. Leicester City have won just one. And that's uh, the game they won at home. Why for Nottingham Forest? Uh, it hasn't been bad for them over Leicester City. Uh, they've won three times, two at home and one away from home. Wow. And you want to look at their last uh, five meetings. The last time uh, Nottingham Forest beat Leicester City was 1-0. And that was 16th of May, 1999. It's a, it's a long time, really. Yeah. And Leicester's first victory against them was 3-1, um, last win against um, Nottingham Forest was a 3-1 win. Then it wasn't even as good as um, at um, King Power Stadium. Yeah. It was at Field Bath Street in Leicester. That was in 1998. That's a long time. That's so a long time ago. It, it's but, going to be a different game. But, but the last time these two, this, this two, uh, these two met, uh, was, yeah, it was such a long time ago. But Leicester in recent years have gone on to win the English League, Premier yeah. League. They've gone on to play in the Champions League. They've gone on to win the English FA Cup. So loads of successes for Leicester City. So I do not think they're still mates. You remember when you have just former classmates in primary school mm -hmm. and then you meet them some, some and sometime in life and you'll be like, oh, you've gone beyond passing. So I think Leicester is a big boy in this case. And oh, I think I ordinarily they should have what it takes to actually go down, go, go in and beat Nottingham Forest. But that being said, like I said earlier, I think Leicester needs to win this game. If they don't win this game, then there will be question, mark all, question marks all over them. They just have to win this one. They just have to. They just have to uh, win this game tonight. Emmanuel has said, do you agree with Emmanuel? Or you just think um, uh, the game might go the way of Nottingham Forest. We have Nigerian players in action. And so I don't know where you're going to be uh, pitching um, your tent as a stand. But in some of the results that came out at the weekend, Arsenal beat Tottenham in the early kickoff by three goals to one. I will come back to analyze this game. Bournemouth nil, Brentford nil also. Crystal Palace 1, Chelsea 2. We saw Fulham 1, Newcastle United 4, uh, Liverpool 3, Brighton 3, Southampton 1, Everton 2 at the weekend. And West Ham United beat um, Wolverhampton Wanderers by 2 goals to nil. Wolverhampton Wanderers coach was sacked as well at the weekend. On, on Sunday night, uh, we saw Manchester United uh, Lost to Man City, Man City 6, Manchester United 3, and Leeds United played 0 0 against Aston Villa. Uh, Emmanuel, let's get back to Arsenal against um, Tottenham. 3 yeah. 1 win. Brilliant. You've yeah. been an advocate of Arsenal doing well this season. Yeah. It, it might just be their year. They're really riding it's, on yeah, honestly, a good form. Honestly, Chris, it's looking like their year. And, and the way they play is a testament to that, actually. I think, yes, Arsenal has actually been on a good run of games, even in the past, but then the, the way they are doing it this period just goes to show that there's something more to this side. And I've always said that the only problem to that trajectory is going to be the fact that they're in Europa League and they do not have squad depth. So if they had done, if they had made two or three more signings in before the closure of the summer transfer window, Probably we'll see an Arsenal that will even go all out and win the Premier League without uh, too much of a, um, of a worry. But that being said, I do think, other than the fact that they have 
issues with squad depth and the fact that they're in the Europa League, I do think that Arsenal so far is a team to contend with. They've been doing so well, they've been doing brilliantly well, they've been playing very good football. Even in the game they lost against United, I think they played really well as well. Mm, sure. And the statistics show that they played really well, but they just lost that game because United were a more pragmatic side. But that being said also, I do think that Arsenal this season, and I fancy them to beat Liverpool because Liverpool... I, I was coming to yeah, that because yeah, their next yeah, game is, Liverpool, is against Liverpool. Exactly, Liverpool. And we saw what Liverpool played against Brighton. But again, absolutely. Brighton has been good this season. So you don't want to take anything yeah, yeah. away from I mean, them. Took all three Would points you? from United at Old Trafford, first game yeah. of the season, incredible with, with their coach who is now with Chelsea. And now it is not easy, even in the poor state of form that Liverpool has got to go to to go to Anfield and get a result. It's not easy. Brighton has done but that. you fancy Arsenal to beat Liverpool? I, I fancy Arsenal to beat Liverpool because Arsenal is confident with what they are doing. That's the issue. They are very confident. They are very confident on the ball as well. And now when you look at the Liverpool side that doesn't have the strength and synergy they used to have in the midfield, when you look at the Liverpool side that their attack is actually based off of what Robertson and Arnold contributes going forward and Robertson hasn't been in the best of form this season, you might want to wonder where Liverpool is going to get their strength from to beat Arsenal. Mm. Arsenal is more composed and a better team going into the game but football writers on script, you never can uh, Yeah, that, that's another part of it. I was about to ask um, Liverpool against Brighton but you've touched on that and let's just look at Man City, Manchester United 6-3, yeah. nine goal thriller, yeah. a massive game. I've Absolutely massive game. Man Man Manchester City had a very good first half, incredible first half, and that was all they needed to win the game. But somehow United came back in the second half. Yes, it was not enough, but then they put up a very good fight. So, um, for one, I think a lot of Manchester United fans will say, yes, we lost this game. Yes, we didn't really play well in the first half, but there are positives because this is a coach that's been with us for five months, and this is a coach also that has been with new players but barely six three, three six three is a big is a big score line i've, I've always a argued united, it, a united united standpoint. united is struggling united has considered six to, to city before under alex Ferguson but has, has united Trafford. considered six this season i mean i'm not sure no no they've not actually but the united has considered i mean this is not worse than going to the london community stadium to lose four zero first half to Brentford. Well, I agree no uh, in, 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 in that context. Yes, Last season I mean, also, Manchester City beat um, United four goals to one. Absolutely. Against. So, and this is a crop of players have just been with this manager for five months, as against a crop of players have been with the manager for five years and they've built a synergy and they have a puzzle. All they just need to do is to take out and put back in. So, it, there's a lot, there is. The differences is massive. I, I actually think that going into this Derby City, we yeah. have the better side. They were ready, and also this has been this is their best game this season so far. I think, and also one positive to take from that is that United caused them to do the extra push, and doing the extra push gave them six goals, and that's wonderful, fantastic. Mm. And still talking about that game, well, one man was um, not necessarily one man because two players scored hat tricks uh, for Manchester City in that game. Haaland was on the score sheet, scoring three goals and providing two assists and also a Phil Foden who scored a hat-trick in the game. But Haaland makes the headline for sure because he's um, scored hat-trick consecutively for Manchester City from home and is the first player um, to score 14 goals in eight matches uh, beating Owen, Michael, was it Michael, Michael, Michael Owen's Owen's record, record yeah. of 48 games you know to that that's just massive it's, massive. it's been a beast in the premier league this absolutely season. absolutely and a lot of teams are struggling to curtail with him he's a menace in fact but i do think that i still i'm i'm, I'm not too quick on to jump onto the manchester city and early Haaland bandwagon and the reason is this i think the season is still very much early mm -hmm. and i do think games will come in hard and thick i do think that the competitive stage of the champions league will set in and i do think also the competitive competitive stage of the uh, English FA Cup yeah. also set in the Carabao Cup is also there to play and I know that when the relegation battle starts it's also going to be a very difficult one for big teams because these smaller teams will want to take points so everybody will start taking in the hard tackles and all of that so the Premier League is a bit dicey um, yes he's proven himself in many leagues even mm -hmm. but you cannot comp uh, compare those leagues in terms of 
their competitive nature to the Premier League. The Premier League has got six done teams. But he's done it in Salzburg, Modi, yeah, Salzburg. Yeah, the difference is that in, in the Dortmund, Austrian German, in the Austrian and League. And then Premier League. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But in the Austrian League, there are about a team or two that can win the, the, the that league. In the German but League, there's the about, league there are about six teams. It's not well. Yeah, those six that's teams, always not, what people yeah, think. But in get, the last in the last seven years, it's been it's been one it, team and the it, other. It, it, I mean, it's been in the last seven years. Yes, I think it's it's been a, in, the in the last seven years. In the last five years, it's been a mix of Liverpool and, and Liverpool, City, City and City, Chelsea City, in the mix. Maybe probably City, 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 Liverpool, City, City. I, I don't think City <laughs> has won it three times stretch. I think uh, two, uh, the yeah. break, Liverpool wins and all and of that. But then again. even when you look at those games, you find yeah. out that, oh, there were about four teams in contention for the title. One dropped out. Well, it's, always like, it's always like that. But, 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 but you think, but you you think Haaland will not continue figure. with his uh, momentum? It is difficult because this momentum and this standard he set going into the pre- his Premier League career is a bit dicey for him. Hmm. And I know that football fans are highly inconsistent with their feelings. For the standard he set for himself, if he drops a bit, the narratives will change. And I hope he's got the skin to take that because the negative press from the English media is coming. Mm. Uh, what do you think? Do you agree with Emmanuel? As it stands, he has scored 14 goals in eight Premier League matches this season. Haaland seems to have taken the Premier League by storm and he scored many goals, really many goals in his career. For, for country, 22 goals in 23 matches and over 170 goals in his club career in about 212 matches that's super staggering you would say but Emmanuel believes uh, he will still drop do you agree and for matches in the UEFA Champions League uh, we'll see a Bayern Munich against Victoria Pleasant Liverpool will take on Rangers FC Porto Leverkusen Inter up against Barcelona and Marcel a sporting CP Ayers against Napoli club bridge up against Atletico Madrid tonight and uh, fra- entrant Frankfurt versus um, Tottenham. These are some of the games um, just to look forward to. Boy, Manuel, which yeah. of these is the biggest game? Inter, Barca, uh, you think it's going to be uh, Frankfurt against Tottenham or Ajax Napoli, just quickly? I think Ajax Napoli, yeah. Inter, Inter Barcelona is one sided. Um, I think Barcelona will win that game. Yeah, honestly, Rangers, uh, R- Liverpool Rangers, Liverpool is going to dust Rangers, I guess. Uh, okay. Even though they are in bad form, I don't think Rangers has anything to pose as danger to them. And on our final note, let's talk about Formula One. Well, it's disappointing for some, but Max Verstappen was left uh, ruining an incredible mess of weekend at the Singapore uh, Grand Prix after his hopes of sealing the World Championship at the Marina Bay Street Circuit faded with a series of mistakes and that's the size of the show we do thank you for watching uh do well to always visit our social media platform make sure you like forward and also share all our comments and praise and emmanuel thank you once again emmanuel for coming thank you so much Appreciate and have a wonderful time see you next time